This is the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter, 2021. Lesson 9 for May 22 to 28, Covenant Sign. Wednesday, May 26, Sign of Sanctification. Exodus 31 verse 13 reads, You shall keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. An exceptionally rich Sabbath passage is Exodus chapter 31, beginning at verse 12 and ending in verse 17, which follows the Lord's directions for the building of the sanctuary and the establishment of its services in chapters 25 to 31. Let's read 31, beginning at verse 12. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy to you. Every one who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. The concept of the Sabbath as a sign, a visible, external and eternal sign between God and his people, is expressed here in this manner for the first time. The text itself contains some fascinating concepts worthy of our study. Two new ideas are joined together in this text. One, the Sabbath as a sign of knowledge, and two, the Sabbath as a sign of sanctification. Consider the sign aspect related to knowledge. The Hebrew understanding of knowledge includes intellectual, relational, and emotional aspects. To know did not simply mean to know a fact, particularly when a person was involved. It also meant to have a meaningful relationship with the one known. Thus, to know the Lord meant to be in a right relationship with Him, to serve Him, as it we find in First Chronicles 28 verse 9, As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father, and serve Him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches our hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek Him, He will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off for ever. To fear him, in Isaiah 11 verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, to believe him, in Isaiah 43 verse 10, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am he, before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. To trust him and seek him, as we read in Psalm 9 verse 10, and those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you, and to call on his name, Jeremiah 10 and verse 25. Pour out your fury on the Gentiles who do not know you, and on the families who do not call on your name, for they have eaten up Jacob, devoured him, and consumed him, and made his dwelling place desolate. Question. Look up each of the texts in the above paragraph, which we've just done, in what ways do these texts help us to understand what it means to know the Lord? In addition, the Sabbath has significance as a sign of sanctification. It signifies that the Lord sanctifies his people, as you read in Leviticus 20 and verse 8, And you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you by making them 
holy, as we read in Deuteronomy 7, 6, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The sanctification process is as much the work of God's redemptive love as is the saving and redeeming work of God. Righteousness, or justification, and sanctification are both activities of God. Leviticus 20 verse 8, we read, I, the Lord, sanctify you. Thus, the Sabbath is a sign that imparts the knowledge of God as sanctifier. Ellen White comments in Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, page 350. The Sabbath, given to the world as the sign of God as the Creator, is also the sign of Him as the Sanctifier. And to finish today, consider the Sabbath day and the process of sanctification, that of being made holy. What role does Sabbath keeping have in this process? How can the Lord use our experience of keeping the Sabbath to help sanctify us? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.